Welcome to Gillet Show. In today's episode of Gillet Show, I will be bringing you a debate for your entertainment and education. Our today's title of the debate is going to be, should couples have a joint account? On one side of the debate, the affirmative side, we are going to have Mrs. Uh, Asong and Mrs. Nkeze. Mrs. Asong and Mrs. Nkeze, you are welcome to the program. Thank you so much. And on the opposing side, we are going to have Mrs. Chalefe and Mrs. Chofo, who hold the opinion that couples should not use a joint account. Mrs. Chalefe and Mrs. Chofo, you are welcome to the program. Thanks very much. Okay, we are equally going to have a panel of judges who are going to help us <coughs> assess the performance of the debaters. So, the judges are going to be Madam Nkemkeng Esther. Madam Kemkeng, you are welcome to the program. Okay, thank you, Gilead. Thank you, okay. everybody. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, Mr. Fonkem Eugene is equally going to be one of our judges. Mr. Fonkem, we are pleased to have you in the program. Thank you very much, Gilead, and I want to thank you the opportunity to thank everyone for, for being there. Okay. We are equally going to have uh, Madam Atemken Mary as well as one of our judges. Madam, it is my utmost pleasure to have you in the program today. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Madam Billet. I am happy to be there with you guys. I welcome our sisters, the wife of our brothers, and I welcome uh, each and everyone who is here. Thank you, Gillette. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Without wasting much time, I would like to hand the microphone to one of our judges, Mr. Fonkem Eugene, who is going to give us the criteria with which they are going to use to evaluate the performance of our debaters so that our debaters can have a clue to how they are going to tender their argument. Mr. Fonkem Eugene, you have the microphone. Yeah, thank you once more, Gillette, uh, for this opportunity. And uh, I want to say that's really an honor for us to be given this opportunity. Um, and to our wives, uh, I think we all know how it goes for each debate. Uh, there are just very few things, the normal thing that we'll be looking at, uh, the good mastery of the language, the well articulation of your points, and mm -hmm. how you uh, cancel a point of your opponent and how you raise a point to, uh, you raise your own point. And uh, we also want to look at the, uh, how brief, how you manage the time management. So since we are really honored to have you guys here, we won't uh, want to keep you here waiting. We won't have your husbands here and we have you here at the same time. We know somebody needs to be taking care of the family, so we need to make everything very brief. So we're looking at that too, the time management. And uh, so that's the way we'll be, we'll, be, uh, we'll be proceeding. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Fonkem, uh, for that uh, brief criteria. Without wasting much of the time, I think each debater will be given five minutes to speak. So I would like uh, us to listen to the first speaker for, uh, who is going to be Mrs. Nkeze. Mrs. Nkeze, you have the microphone. Thank you. Madam the moderator, members of the jury, members of Gaza 8990, and my learned colleague. Good evening to you all. Good evening, madam. We are so privileged to be here today as wives of members of the Gaza 8990 badge. Today, our topic of the debate is, should spouses have a joint account? Of course, yes. I stand for the fact that spouses should have a joint account. Having a joint account brings a lot of unity in marriage. Anybody on a clamorous on boat will always go for that point because from what we we'll talk about it, there's no doubt to even refuse why spouses should not get a joint account. From my definition, or from my study of law in a university, I learned about um, our English judge, Lord Denny, 
who draws our attention about marriage as husband and wives that would live together. And um, this part also means marriage is between one man and one wife to the exclusion of others. It also brings us closer to God's creation. When God created humans, he created the institute of marriage. And he makes us know that marriage is between a husband and wife. In Mark chapter 10, verse 8, God makes us know that the two will become one and indivisible. So I don't see any reason why they should separate our account when God has actually ordained marriage to be between one and one and that they should be one and not indivisible. I have a couple of points to bring about that. Firstly, when we have a joint account, it brings a lot of unity in such a way that everybody is equal to the account. What you have in, you chip into the account. And you have a very transparent view about the account. We bring everything together. It helps us, especially when um, we have to like payment of bills. Let's go to the payment of bills. If we have a joint account in marriage, it's very easy for us to pay bills and utility and other financial obligation. Like, yeah, processing a mortgage or to buy a house. If a wife has limited money in his account, he can't process a house. You have to have a joint account with your wife, with your husband, sorry, so that you might be able to have more money to purchase a house. Easy also for you to pay fees of the children. There's no need for you to say that my wife will pay uh, the fees of X, Y, the daughter pay the fees of Y. I've seen a lot of situations that has brought a lot of conflicts between children when they grow up. When they divide that the husband will pay X and the, the, the other person pay Y. When those children grow up, X said that daddy didn't do anything to my fees. It was only mommy who helped me to pay my fees. So he never helped me in any way. And those children grew up with a very different diversity of views. Sometimes it creates conflicts between themselves. So I'm very strongly on the opposite side. I strongly support that couples should have a joint account because it really helps bring the family together. It brings the unity together. So it doesn't create any forum for women or for spouses to be ahead or to keep arguing over certain things that was very easy to to make. There's no secret in marriage. As God said that everything should be one, I believe everybody is exposed to everything. If you have something, if I have my assets, I believe it is my husband's assets. There's no need why I have money and I said it is my money and I'm married, I'm living in the house. If you hide things from my husband, I don't believe that is any more marriage. Separating an account means a flood gets to separation. It means the marriage is already at the verge of collapse. It means it's getting towards a divorce case. We should don't believe that. If you think that you are married, you have to stand together and die together. So, nice. on aspect of um, also spend, uh, sending money to family or helping extended family, the wife is always very clear of what goes into the family. If they're sending something to my husband's family, I have to get an idea and everything is transparent. You need to see what goes out of the account and what comes in the account. Also, all this will have to make it less stressful for the couples to build a financial life. I also have a point about um, joint accounts. Like in the case of sickness or death of a member, let me start with the sickness. If one of the spouses is sick or get involved in an accident, they need money to treat that person. If it's a joint account, it's very easy to get access to that money. You just go to the account and withdraw the money and go give it. But with a separate account, you need permission or you need a formality in which you have to take to withdraw that amount of money. If you have a separate account, guess what? To follow a legal procedure to go get the wife's money. Maybe by the time you finish getting the money, that wife is dead or something has happened to the wife. So I don't see why couples should separate the money. Instead of just taking it easily and treat your wife, you have to go in another way. And in case of death of a member also, it's very easy for one of the surviving partner to take what's left in the account. 
rather than still going to follow up or to wait for the will to come out before you know whether the money is going to you or to some of the family members, which you don't know, which you don't really know. So it's very easy, as I said, that if it's a joint account, you know that all what is left was yours and it goes back to the account or it goes back to help the family. But with a separate account, it takes time, time consuming, and maybe you don't even know whether the wife will it to somebody else. You might finally lost everything about that. So it's always good for couples to be very transparent in everything they do in their marital home. Also, another aspect of the joint account, when family join their resources together, I believe God lives in that marriage. Christ lives in the marriage of a home that is always together, that they put their head together, they live together, they do everything together. So for now, I might raise my point. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Keze, for those wonderful points. Okay, let us listen to the first speaker again, who is Mrs. Chalefe. In that I want to acknowledge the presence of the moderator as well as the presence of the judges, not leaving out our distinguished uh, guests. Uh, I want to thank the moderator honestly for giving me this opportunity to raise my point of view on this very important topic, which is for the benefit of our families. I will start by talking about the, the issues raised by my landed colleague on the other side. She spoke of unity in marriage. Wow. When I heard her talk, I was like, is this really marriage we are talking about? Marriage is about my friend. When we get to the unity, it's for love. And then to put the family together. We are not there for the bank account of each other or whatever somebody has in his or her account is not the problem of the spouse. We are there for the unity, the love. When we talk about unity, it's not about the money that each other is bringing to the family coffers. It's for the love that binds the family together. The unity in money, okay, money is there, it's good and fine. With a separate bank account, everybody has the right to carry out expenses in the family. It's not, it's not necessary for us to have a joint account to be able to pay bills or children's school fees. You can even have a joint account, fine. But then the person that is always, always ahead, the, the children will always know that, okay, it's mommy, since mommy, mommies are always close to the children. It's mommy that is always food paying my fees. It's mommy that always takes me to school. So that aspect does not cancel the fact that joint account is necessary. I firmly stand on the ground that individuals, marriage is a unity of two entities who we, we came together to form a union. Before they came together, each of them had a, prospect, a perspective and a view for the future. Marriage does not kill that view, does not kill that perspective for the future. I have my view and my husband has his view. Now, if I have, before we got married, I have my account, he had his. You will not tell me that because we are married. It's true that when we talk of, of Mark 10.8 uh, about equality in marriage. Likewise, Matthew 19.5 says, a man will leave his father and mother and cling unto his wife. The Bible did not say that the man will colonize his wife. It's a unity of two people and separate bank account is the ID situation. Most marriages that you see, marriage falling apart is because of financial difficulties. It, well, I'm sure most of us have come across this situation whereby you see a friend having a problem with a wife and you go to mediate. When you ask the husband, say, what is going on, boo? He will tell you that, go and ask her. You go to the wife, what is the problem? Go and ask him, is your friend? Because they are ashamed to tell you that they have financial conflict because of joint account. The man wants to uh, do an expenditure. You have to take permission from your wife. The man will not understand why the, a woman will need to spend 100,000 francs in a massage room, whereby the man, you can lie on the bed and the man massage you 
for 20 minutes, even one hour for free. But then the woman needs that me time. You need that me time to, for yourself. You need the me time for yourself. Paying the 100,000 is nothing because you are working and you have your account. You can always sign your check at will because you need that me time. You sit in your massage parlor for one hour and pay 100,000 francs. But when you have to take permission from your husband, the husband and the wife are two entities. Two people, if you have always conflicting, how then do you, do you want your wife or your husband to believe that this expenditure you want to carry out is important for your unity? You will feel as if you are wasting the money because it's a joint account. But if you have your separate account, you are financially independent from each other. Independence is not only independence from academics or whatever, it's also concerned the financial aspect. And if you maintain your separate bank account, at the end of the month, you put the expenditures on the table, you put all your checks on the table, and you separate, this is going for this aspect, student fees, the bills, the mortgage, and all of that is fine. Another aspect is um, of, of protecting your spouse from your creditors. If you have your account and your creditor wants to fall back, there is a legal proceedings, what will happen? Your creditor can fall to the joint account. And when they fall to the joint account, the family is finished. But then if the man had his account and the wife had hers, it's true that even the worst case scenario, the, 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 the liability will be limited to the wife or the husband. And then the family can feed on, the, on the, 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 the remaining bank account until the situation is regularized. And uh, another aspect I, I wanted to, to bring about is on the, you know, when we talk of marriage, marriage is a union of two people. It's not a colonization. The man does not come to take whatever the wife has kept or the wife putting the eyes on the man's money. You marry the man for love, not for his money. So his money is his money, yours is yours. You keep your bank account and if there's any bill, you can always settle it out as two adults. That's my, 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 my humble opinion. Now you talk of, uh, the other aspect you talk, you talk about extended family and then uh, uh, joining resources. It's not all about joining resources. Joining resources does not prove that you are in a marriage. It does not prove that you are in a marriage. A marriage is, is all about the family and your love for each other. You don't need to, to put your resources together before you know that God is in that marriage. The family have many other things you can do. You can be joined in prayer. You are prayerful. You go to church together. You eat together. But definitely not about the resources. The resources have nothing to do in a marriage. Now, you take, you take the, the aspect of um, um, the, the husband footing the bills, paying to their school fees, and the children will feel that is daddy or his mommy. That is no marriage. Marriage is all about portraying to the children that the resources comes from both of us. Whether whosoever is footing the bills, the children should not know that is mommy or is daddy that is footing the bills. That's the unity we are talking about, and not the unity in bank accounts. Separate bank accounts is what is important for the family. When you have a joint account, you feel stuck. You feel as if you are in a prison because whatever expenditure the husband wants to carry out, you must explain to the wife, to the latter, why you need to, 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 you, to carry your mother to the hospital, why you need to buy present for your mother. Or likewise, the wife is not only about the, 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 the wife or the husband, it's the spouse. Both spouses have the same responsibility. If I feel that, I need to build a house for my mother. And I explain to my husband and he says, okay, ho, look, keep that one aside. That is not what is important for now. But to me, it's important. To him, it's not important. Maybe because it's not his mother or his father, he think, feels that it's not important. 
but I need to build a house for my mother. And I'm working the money. She trained me to school to take care of her. And not to, because you are married to me, I need to take authorization from you to build a house for my mother. I work the money and the money is in my account. I go to my account and I discharge the money to take care of the responsibility I have to take care of. You did train me to school. My parents trained me to school. <laughs> so keeping a joint, bank, a joint bank account is an error and that will lead to failed marriages. Any right thinking husband who will see that it's important to keep your wife independent, to keep your wife independent. It doesn't mean that you should shower your wife with money or spoil her with money, but then you make her to stand on her feet and manages her own finance. And another thing is when each other, are, when you are keeping separate bank accounts, you have the, 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 the zeal to maintain your account. Each month you say, okay, this is the, what I have in my account. This is what I have in my account. There is some sort of competition and which is good for the growth of the family, which is honestly very important for the growth of the family. Uh, for now, I will end at this level. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chalefe, for those powerful points that you have raised. So without wasting much time, I would like to give the opportunity to the second speaker for to give us her own opinion. Mrs. Atom. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Madam, the moderator, the jury, the entire Gaza team for hosting us, um, your very humble wives and uh, on your platform. On this very sensitive topic, should couples have a bank account? In fact, when I listened to my opponent on the other side, trying to convince us that it is okay for couples to have a separate bank account, I'm baffled. Really? And if I understood you well, you made mention of the fact that your husband can go, or either of the couple can go and have some good massage, whereas you can have it at home. That's because you have the money and it is under your charge. And then secondly, you made mention of you having an account before marriage. Really? If you had an account before marriage and you think you want to just have it solely to yourself, why did you get married? And thirdly, you said, um, parents sent you to school. Your parents sent you to school. That man equally was educated as well. You don't want to consider that. And if I want to generalize everything, it will bring us out the aspect of being extravagant. How does it come about? Extravagancy come about as a result of either couple not being able to know how much money is in either couple's account. And the moment they have the least opportunity to spend that money, they will do their least to make sure they spend it well. Why do they do that? They, do that they did that because they are afraid of autonomy. They have the feeling of being used by the other couple um, in that no matter uh, the situation in the marriage, one couple will be very much focused on working and the other couple will be more based on maybe house choices and taking care of the kids. And you know those things cannot come equally, even if the couples have uh, the same bank account or have the same, imp sorry, if the couples have the same employer, it is but certain that they will not get the same employ uh, the same income. They are not gonna earn the same income. And uh, the other couple, as a result of that, will feel being used because of the sacrifices that they are, uh, they are putting into um, the marriage. Uh, so there will be, as a result of that, one of the couple, it will bring, it, it will bring in the aspect of uh, jealousy, hatred, and you name every other aspect of it. 
So once a couple start redefining the word marriage or couple to mean one, to mean two, or half, one third, I think that appellation is no longer one. And that will be the beginning of crisis in the marriage and which is not healthy for any couple or marriage. So if couples, if the two couple become one, they'll be able to plan and execute their project together easily. And again, couples will focus on collective needs, not individual interests. More importantly, how can you understand how can you not understand the fact that marriage is a God-ordained institution that is being built on trust? When marriage is built on trust, there is openness. There is honesty. You have empathy. You collaborate. And there is constructivism in whatever activity that you want to carry on. Trust me, when a couple bundled all these qualities together, there is bound to be high level of productivity amongst them. Let me take us back to this little scenario. Um, I read this story on a social media about this very rich Nigerian um, business tycoon. He was married to the wife, but whatever thing he did with his business, he never got his wife involved in it. And uh, God forbid, he had an accident one day when he left his house. And he couldn't make it. Even carrying on with the funeral arrangements, this lady couldn't do it because she couldn't have access to the finances of the husband. What did she do? She kept walking from one bank. You know how your husband would drive you to this bank and do some transactions. She kept driving to one bank and trying to see if somebody could help her. But nobody could help her because of uh, the banking ethics. But then, being women as we are, one of the employees became so sympathetic because even the funeral arrangement could not be carried on, that could not be carried out. The lady decided to go against the banking rules and release the information to the lady to enable her even bury the husband. But that was somebody you couldn't boast around him. Do any of us as couples want to go through this? No. Um, let me give us this, uh, this quotation. In Ephesians uh, 5.3, I quote, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and the two shall join together. Will leave his father and his mother, and the two shall be joined unto, and the man will be joined unto his um, wife, and the two shall become one flesh. They did not say two flesh. And once you're already two flesh, you breathe together. You eat together you sleep together, you share together. What is the problem when it comes to finances? I want us to think a little bit about that. Again, in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your height and lean not on your own understanding. This is God himself saying so. With this all forms of, create, um, this all from our creator, what again do we need as couples to understand the aspect of us joining our resources together? Finally, I want to appreciate you all for listening and uh, I'll rest my case with some two simple things. We all understand it. One hand cannot tie a bundle properly. No, it will never work. You need two hands to tie it well. And again, let us as couples practice, I quote, what is mine is yours. Work hard and protect your investments together. Thank you all so much. I want to thank uh, 
Mrs. Atong for articulating her points very, very well. Wonderful points that she has raised there. I'm really happy. And in fact, it was all awesome. So I want to give the microphone to uh, the opposing side. And uh, we have Mani, uh, Madam Tangi Victorine, who is going to speak on behalf of Mrs. Chofo on the side that couples should not use a joint account. Mani, you have the microphone. Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. And thank our beautiful wife for coming on here and sharing their views. It is very important that we come on once in a while and listen to one another and see how we feel. So on this very important topic today, we are talking about, my point here is, I don't support the fact that couples should join, should have a bound, bound joint account. I have a couple of reasons. We live in a, uh, in a very diverse world. When you are married, yes, you are one. And I strongly believe that it is love. It's not about the joint account. Reason being that in our, in our tradition, we used to have what we call polygamy. If you are married and you have a joint account with that man, and it happened that the man get married to another woman, your stress, your suffer, the money you've worked so hard, it's gone because that other woman become part of that money. And you don't know who this man is going to favor in the middle. So having your own bank account, be it a woman or the man, is, is because it brings a lot of less stress to everybody. And on this point of polygamy, uh, uh, you don't know the intention of the other woman. If the woman came to the marriage to suck you dry, so she would drag you into their problems. Another important point is that in this, our own way we call America, we have what we call insurance. You are married and you want to say, let's do a joint bank account. You do a joint bank account. You have everything joined, your insurance joined. And you are with that man. That man, you don't, maybe if you trust him, you don't know what he does behind closed door. The next thing some of them do is go and plot your debt and use that money and stay alive, especially using the insurance money that is being, he knows that you have this big uh, bank account or this big insurance. And because you, he knows everything about it. Some of them do kill their spouses, whether a man or a woman. So I stand on the point that we should have a separate bank account. Also, with a separate bank account, it helps you, each and every individual spouse, to be accountable on what you do day to day. So it makes you feel motivated to go out and work. Some men, you do the joint account, all they do is sleep. Or oh, some women, all you do is leave. even if they have the opportunity to work, they don't want to work because they know that they have a joint account and this person is very hardworking. So who is in the in the middle? Who is losing at that point? The person who is hardworking. Let's come to the point of the children. When we do separate bank account, at the end of the month, bring down your paycheck. We all know that our mortgage costs this. Our mortgage costs this. We put it down. What I do personally, we create an account for the children's school. We put the money there. We have one account that we do as joint account. We put there to pay our bills, to pay unforeseen problems. And then you keep your separate bank account. And what I do is I have my, my husband as a co-signer in my account. In case I'm not there, he still has access to go to my account. But we don't do joint account. So it doesn't mean that I don't love my husband. It doesn't owe oh, my spouse. I'm not saying that I do that, but I'm just presenting a point. It doesn't mean that that unity is not there. Our marriage should not be based on bank account. Our marriage should be based on unity and the love we have. Expose your children to both spouses, whoever is sharing what, oh, by the way, mommy and daddy, 
said that this time around, this is where we are going to go. Let the children know that everybody is contributing to the children's future. So if you will create a special account just for budgeting for the house and the bills and the children, everybody is equal to the account. There are accounts that I go in and I do what I want, but there are accounts that nobody can get there unless I authorize you to get to that account. I think it does give some accountability and also prevent people from being jealous from one another. We live in a world where you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. In the case of divorce, one of the person with a joint account is going to, it's going to hit you so hard, especially if you were the one that was working so hard. Some men take advantage, especially in this our Western world. And they do divorce because they see that the spouse has so much money so that when they divorce, they're going to share that account into two. And you were just sleeping you, you get the money from nowhere and you grow. And somebody who have worked so hard, even before you, you met that person, the money is shared together. And then you go on with depression. So I won't take so much of your time because I'm at war. You can hear my passion talking and you guys are getting her. So anyway, I would have loved to say more, but I thank everybody for coming out with their view. This is what I have to say for now. Thank you guys so much for listening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Madam Tangi, for those powerful points. In fact, it's been wonderful listening to you. So I would like to give the last opportunity to the interviewer speaker for who is Mrs. Keze to round up with your own side of the debate. Mrs. Keze, you have the microphone. <laughs> Thank you, my youth. Obviously, I still not agree with what my opponent said. All what she was talking, I didn't really get any good point in it. Joint account still stands and it still holds grounds in a, a perfect and a, a lovely family or a marriage. I heard she talk about somebody killing the other spouse. Why should you think of negativity? When you are married, everything has to be positive. Always think on the positive side. Don't think of should in case somebody, how can somebody marry somebody? You marry because you love that person and you kill a person to get the asset. I don't believe that. You don't need to even put that in your mind. So I cancel that fact. And I still go for the fact that joint account is also permissible. Before I started, I defined um, the marriage my marriage on the ground based on Lord Denny's definition in Hide and Hide as a union of one man and one wife to the exclusion of others. If you want to include polygamy there, it will still all be joint accounts. Because if you said two, um, what you said about uh, if it is many wives or they will not treat the other people equally, if it is polygamy, they still join all the assets together and they'll know how to divide it rather than separate, uh, separating them, which could cause more problems. In marriage, there's no loser. If you're going in for marriage, be ready for the better part, which is the positive side. Copy with what my colleague said on my own side, we all round up the unity in marriage, the trust and uh, equality and transparency in marriage. And uh, with the the risk involved in separating account, conflicts in the family. I still stand for the fact that account should be joined. I just want to ask this question to my opponent that I would like you to ask a financial planner about the advantage of joint account. Guess what? I believe the person will tell you the positive side that it is communication and foster trust in marriage. I have one quotation that I will read from um, a financial, a world advisor by name Drew Kerman from Jake Harbor, Washington. He said, financial trust is a pretty component of marital trust. Those two separate accounts doesn't have an open and honest relationship, but joint account holders have a harmonious relationship. With all this, I strongly believe that 
any modern person, anybody who wants a lasting and trust, transparent marriage should go for a joint account. With all this fact, I believe I can raise my case. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your eloquence, uh, Madam Keze. That was wonderful. So I would like to give the microphone now to the rebuter speaker again, who is going to be Mrs. Chalefe. Mrs. Chalefe, you have the microphone. Okay, thank you very much, Madam the moderator. Uh, I heard what my opponent on the other side said, but without going back to too much details, the second speaker spoke about being extravagant in the marriage when you have separate accounts or when you have an account before marriage at marriage you give your account your money to your husband or you join in the account feeling being used or the wife is focusing on housework why the husband make money honestly when i hear somebody talk like that i feel like this person does not know what she is talking about who told you that the wife cannot also earn much money? Taking care of kids and housework. When your mother gave birth to you, did she tie you to taking care of kids and housework? The kids is for both husband and wife. They are not yours only. The husband is supposed to be taking care of his own share of the housework. Why both of you focus outside to look for money? It's not as if you stay put, you sit comfortably, you paint your nails, you sit in the house, you prepare food and eat, knowing that the husband is out there stressing himself and then die and leave you with the money for you to enjoy your old age. You have to work the money and follow your bank account. With separate bank accounts, it's possible for you to live your life the way you think that is worth living. She spoke of wasting money being extravagant. I said it's a me time. Any human being needs that time to stay comfortable. You work the money, so you have to take care of your money-making machine. You are your money-making machine. You have to take care of yourself. The me time doesn't mean that you are extravagant. You just use a bit of what you work to take care of yourself, which is very important. Please. This aspect is very important for your own health. It doesn't mean that spending 100,000 in a massage room, you are being extravagant. I cancel the fact. Because you work the money and you need this time to build yourself up, to give you the strength and the energy to continue working the money for the family. And we talk of money being the center of marriage. When you say a joint account, it gives you, it makes you to be comfortable, it makes you to, to, to be productive. The center of it all is money, which means you are in that marriage for money. If the money doesn't come, definitely you are going to back out as fast as possible. The center of marriage is, you know, has nothing to do with money. Keeping separate bank accounts, it doesn't mean that you are not putting the bills together. No, you put the bills together, you build your marriage, you build your family, you do investment for the growth of the family, but definitely not in a single bank account. Like I said in my, in my introductory speech, any good husband, any good husband, will always want his wife to be financially independent. It's not all about you taking permission from your husband to carry out any activity. You need to be financially independent to take care of yourself, take care of your family, and take care of your, of your children, not to have a joint bank account. Definitely having a joint bank account will always put you under the husband because husbands are always the majority, they always on the control, which means you, the woman, any expenditure you want to take care of, you need to submit the detail to your husband for approval and authorization. If not, nothing works. She spoke of a pathetic story from one business tycoon in Nigeria. It boils down to what I have been saying. The man failed. He failed because he did not give his wife the financial independence she needs. It's pathetic. It's not all about what your husband has worked. What have you been doing as a wife? 
What have you been doing? Where is your bank account? You don't have. I'm sorry, but is is he failed as well as the wife failed more than the husband because she did stood up for herself to be to be independent financially. If she was independent financially, she would not go about looking for her husband's account to bury her husband. It's her responsibility as a wife, as a mother of his children, to bury her husband. She failed because she was not financially independent enough to take care of her responsibility. She should not blame it on the dead husband. He has nothing to do about it. If she failed in her responsibility because while the husband was alive, going about his business, she was comfortable painting her nails and cooking food and eating and making herself beautiful. At the end of the day, what does she have to show for? Nothing. But she had nothing to show for. That was why she had to go from one bank and another looking for money to bury her husband because she failed in her responsibility as a wife. You will not wait for your husband to tell you that, okay, love, take this money to the market. As an independent woman, as a working class lady, Come on, we have gone past those age where mothers used to stay at home, wait for their husband to come back with money for them to take to the market. You need to get up, you make your program for the month, you know that this is my income. I make the program for the month, I make the budget for the month, and we have common, common goal for the month. This is what we are saving. But it's not all about having a joint bank account. It's not all about having a joint bank account. Even if you have independent account, all what you have cited perfectly well, there's no problem. Now, if you have a joint bank account and something happens to each other, you need to still notify the bank to say that, okay, my husband is no longer there and I'm the one to control this account. You will still go through the financial and the legal hustles you spoke about. But then if you have your own bank account, by the time they are managing the legal proceedings, you don't have any problem with your children. You live as you, li you were before. You don't have any difficulties. You take care of your financial responsibility as a woman and as a mother of the children. You do, should not depend on your husband to, to foot the bills for you. You go out there, you work the money, you keep your bank account. At the end of the month, the husband comes with her, his account and you come with your account. It's not as if there's a secret. There's no secret. And the marriage is based on love and trust. Of course, trust is still there because I have my bank account and my husband knows that, okay, my account is well used because he trusts me. It's a marriage that is based on trust. It's not a marriage that is based on money. But when you start putting your eye on what your husband is earning, what he is spending, it means that you are money-minded. All your focus is on his money. It's not all about the love you have for him, but it's about his bank account, which means if he, one day he can no longer bring the amount of money he used to bring to the house, what will happen? You start packing your bags to go look for where they make more money for you to live your comfortable life. I strongly stand on the grounds and I'm still standing on the grounds. And I want to, my advice to all the men in this forum, Gaza, it's 990. I know that you all are intelligent people. You are intelligent men and women. No woman should fall for a trap that the husband will say, let's have a joint account. When your husband starts telling you that you should have a joint account, know that he's setting a trap for you. Woe betide you if you fall on the trap. You are finished. You are gone. Because by virtue, husbands are always meant to be extravagant in their expenditure. And it's a woman that takes care of the house. Now, what will happen if you have a joint bank account and the man there filling his things and then taking care of his side cheeks? Honestly, he goes and withdraws the money and take care of his, of his, of his side cheeks. While you there concentrating, working money, putting in the account, he's on the other side withdrawing and taking care of his, of his side cheeks. And you, you focus on taking care of the children because the children are your responsibility. I say no. Keep your bank account and he keep his. At the end of the month, both of us will come with our bank statement and we show what we have worked for, our paycheck, which both of us know each other's paycheck definitely well. I come with my paycheck, you come with yours. I print my bank statement and I show you. You don't have to tell me that, no, this money is like this. This is how it's going to be used. Of course, you have your own account. If you feel that there's an important expenditure you want to carry out, you can as well carry out from your account, but keeping in mind that is for the benefit of the family. 
is for the benefit of the family and everybody is happy. But when you start tying face, you say, okay, I want to do this expenditure. And the woman says, no, it cannot work. You cannot send this amount of money to your, to your mother, else I'll also send to mine. Conflicts start coming in and that is the birth of problems. And when people start asking you that, oh, what is your problem? You say, go and ask him. They ask the husband, what's the problem? Go and ask her. Because they are ashamed to tell the public that him and his wife, they have financial conflict, which is always there with joint accounts. But if you open your separate bank account, you can manage your finances fairly well and take care of the family responsibility, which is a joint responsibility. The responsibility is not all about the joint bank account. It's all about being matured upstairs. When you are matured, you don't need to have a joint bank account to make the family grow. Um, uh, I will end by appreciating Gaza 8990 for this wonderful job. And um, I hope that we will not end at this topic. There are more interesting topics out there which we can focus and then each other will have to learn something because as they usually say, there is no wasted energy. Any energy you pull out, you are definitely going to benefit something from it. So I want to appreciate your efforts and I say, God will give you guys the grace to continue in this direction for the better men of the group. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Kalefe, for those powerful points. In fact, I am overwhelmed. I am oh indeed boy. very, very overwhelmed. This is really a debate, a tough one at that. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, my audience. Thank you so much. So, without wasting much of our time, I would like to give an opportunity to our judges to, I mean, make a comment of how the debate went. So, I will give the first opportunity to Madam Kemkeng Esther, let her tell us how it on the debate. Madam Kemkeng, you have the microphone. Gilia, thank you very much. Thank you all. You guys have done a great job. Both sides have done, I, I don't even know how to say it. You all have done your best. In fact, the debate was very, very interesting and lively. Um, from your, like, the performance of the both parties, you all did your very best. You all have a very good uh, ideas, good points. So, like right now, I'm even confused. I don't even know <laughs> if you <laughs> if you ask me. I think the difference is not much, despite the fact that one side was like, let me say, has a failure, like because the other partner was not really. But I appreciate you all. I thank you all. You you done a great job. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Kem Kem. So I will just go forward to hand the microphone to Mr. Fong Kem Eugene. How did you find the debate, Mr. Fong Kem? Good, sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, Moderator. I really want to uh, thank this wonderful lady. I don't know if you Mr. actually Fong Kem, went. I'm waiting for your comment. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, perfect. Um, I guess I was on mute, but I was saying that I really want to appreciate this wonderful lady. To the best of my knowledge, it's like you actually went for uh, some sort of a, a contest to be able to pick the, uh, the participant. The uh, debate was so wonderful. I have nothing to say about the, how eloquent they were. I don't have anything either to say on how um, they were able to counter each point and raise their own uh, points with uh, a lot of argument to support that. So um, as as I Riley said, we are actually on a very tight angle right now to see uh, who actually made it. But I can tell you that it was uh, so wonderful. And uh, we definitely want to say that uh, if we were to go out there for uh, a contest, then we don't have any, uh, any doubt on who to take. So uh, we right. you get hearing from us with uh, where we stand. So thank you very, so very much. 
Oh la la, I love to hear that. Thank you so much. Now let's listen to Madam Atemken Mary. Yeah, Gillette, thank you so much. Thank you, Gillette. And uh, yeah, it was a, a powerful debate, wonderful. It was a great debate. And uh, actually, I learned from it. I want to really thank our wonderful wives for coming in very strongly and very powerfully on this debate. That was wonderful. Uh, being a judge in this particular debate is a difficult one because I can tell you the debate was wonderful. Both sides were so strong. It's a difficult one to be a judge, uh, but I will try. I will start with the general conduct. Uh, the general conduct, I mean, will be like uh, if the both parties respected the time frame, uh, the atmosphere of the debate, that's how I base my judgment. Uh, concerning that, I will say, uh, since the second party was not present and somebody had to just like jump uh, money, just like just came in just to like cover up the thing. So the time frame and all that was not really, I didn't really consider it anymore. So I want to say the both parties did, they did a wonderful job uh, concerning the general conduct of the debate. Uh, I would also like to say that both parties defended their points very, very well, and both of them were right on their points. I mean, no point was wrong. Everybody, whatever each person said was right, actually. Uh, I will wish the debaters uh, and the public to know that no matter how good the arguments were, the counter arguments were as well wonderful. I mean, if the people for, no matter how good they were, the people who were against came on also very strongly on them. So it is like both parties were really like uh, two ions being hitting their heads together, you know. Um, going back to the debate, I will just want to flash on certain points that some uh, uh, that uh, the members made. Those for four hammered on things like unity, uh, transparency, no secrets in a, in the marriage in case of joint accounts, no division, and in case of death, there will be no paperwork involved. Those people against came also uh, against <coughs> with uh, saying that the joint account would encourage laziness. Marriages, mar uh, uh, marriage is not like colonizing the other person, meaning that everybody should stand on their two feet. Uh -huh. uh, a, joint, uh, a separate account, account will create independence. You will feel free and breathe, and you will not be stopped. You are protected in case of polygamy. So those are the points I got. Those are really wonderful points. They are, like I said, like two ions which were like hitting together. So, in this case, I will raise my case and I will leave the floor to my colleague, uh, to, to the host, to give the final uh, judgment. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Madam Atemken, for uh, those wonderful comments. Why I leave the judges to tally their scores and send them to me, I will now look, I will now give the opportunity to the audience and me. I will give the opportunity to three persons uh, among the audience to, I mean, say a word or two about the topic of the day. Let's see, Jones. So any person, anybody can opt to speak. Let me begin. Jones. Let me give the privilege. Let me give the privilege to our vice president, Ara Chelis. Please, Ara, can you say something about the topic of the day? So, in fact, this is this is beautiful. Both sides. When I started, I had my I had my own side where I was standing for, but by now I'm very confused. <laughs> I don't, all the, the points for were so great. I was like, yay! The points for against were so great. I'm like, yay! But where do I stand now? So first of all, I just really want to thank whoever um, had this idea to bring this great topic to to light. I've always really thought that in as much as in a relationship, in a marital relationship, each of the parties needs a certain amount of independence. 
um, an autonomy, like the president's wife said, it's also very important to maintain that unity in the relationship, which usually is realized is realized if everything is transparent, especially in terms of finances. Again, like the opponent said, you can still have that transparency without having a joint account. So it's really up to, let's see what the judges say. So thank you very much, both sides, for the very intellectual and eloquent arguments. And thank you for giving me the floor, Gillette. Thank you so much, our vice president, for those wonderful words. Mr. John Tazi, you have the microphone. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, was, I was just giving the solution. Maybe when the president interjected, he found himself in a difficult um, position, just like I am, just like Ara, uh, um, that, um, you know, it would have been proper that the audience give their uh, input so that it could help the judges, which is exactly what um you are doing right now that's why i raised my hand that maybe we should let the audience um um have some stay on that because it is very um it's a very very good debate both sides did really good i came in with the natural feeling that um a couple should join their account but i can tell you frankly now i'm a little bit confused given the um the the, the how strong um, Mrs. Uh, Charlie Fag was. I really appreciate her for that. She, uh, even though um, her partner wasn't able to join in, but um, she did really good. And uh, thank Manny so much for uh, coming in. You know, this is a difficult thing, and you come in unprepared and you are able to give that kind of input. I just want to thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. John Taz. Any other speaker? The last opportunity, please. Yes, okay. um, the president, no, I mute you because you can favor madam. <laughs> you <laughs> cannot favor madam, so I mute you. You don't have the morality to speak here, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, a, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Any other person, please? Yes. Uh, yeah, let me just... Uh, at one or two, I just want to uh, <laughs> appeal to the audience that, yeah, like other debate that we had before, uh, we should not misconstrue that any point that people are presenting here it is for education, yeah. for entertainment. Yeah. There are many, there are points that are earned out. People should not misconstrue that this is what they are doing in their home or in their daily life. So I just want to make that point clear out there. This is something that they are putting so much time to do research. They are presenting this educational topic to us for us to figure out what we can do that can best suit every individual family. So I just want to say, yes, yeah, they have presented, they did a lot of research, their point were well articulated. I mean, if the counter uh, argument were well done, it means that they were paying attention to when other opposing parties were speaking. We can already see them operating from what the opponent speak before they could actually add their own point. That is something that you, it's very hard if you're a, a debater uh, to really air your point uh, by combating what the previous presenter has said before airing your own point. They were able to do that so eloquently and uh, I just want to appreciate them for taking the time to turn on to, turn on to Gaza Media for that. Uh, one more, thank you so much. Director, you are part of the team. So, any okay. other speaker, please? Can it's a very nice debate. I stand on the part that the uh, spouse should not have joined joint account. I really support Madam Charifa Larry for her points. She gave a very powerful point, and I stand on those points. Why? Because when you have joint account, it can destroy your marital. It can destroy. It can destroy the marriage because we come from diversity a family. You have a lot of family responsibility. If you want carry more burden than the other, it can destroy the marriage. If the woman says you are spending more on your, on your site, and the woman says you are spending less, so having different <laughs> account is just the best solution. I stand on Madame Charifa Hilary. She has defended her points very well, and I stand with her. <coughs> that is my view. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you have the microphone. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you all. I am very happy for the debate and I'm very happy for the idea of inviting our wives. And I'm also very impressed by their participation. I, I had a position, in short, as Arash said, I had a position from the beginning and one moment I changed, at one moment I came back. As the arguments were going to and fro, I was like just dangling from one end to the other. But as, as Gilles Riley concluded, we have to pick the points from the two from the two parts and see if we can put them together. <coughs> but the most important thing for me is the love. If we have separate accounts and there is love in the family, whatever comes in, we can sit table in, put it on the table, and we decide what to do with our project. We put each person goes and takes from the accounts and bring and we, and it still works. Because at one moment, for me particularly, I, I feel like I should have my independence. But my independence is not that I'm hiding from my husband. It's a, it's, there are two different ways of looking at it. Independence to say, okay, I have, my, I have my bank account. But he knows what is even inside. He knows that I have this, I have this. If, if, I, I, have, if I happen to have something or whatever, and I play in Jangi, and, I, and at the end of the Jangi, I take the Jangi, I come and tell him, ah, that Jangi, I got it, I just put it in my account. He knows, but at least it's my account. I feel that way and I feel myself, I feel comfortable that way. But it doesn't mean that if there's a project that we have to do, I'll obviously go and take the money and I'll put it down together and we'll still talk. But I, and I also feel bank uh, joint accounts at one moment are also necessary for people, women who are not working, for example. If you love your, your wife as a man and you want to make her, to feel her and make her feel secured as a housewife, for example, you see, open the joint account, even if she doesn't really con con contribute something substantial, but out of love for her and to secure her, all what you put inside still belongs to both of you, but at least she feels loved and she feels secure, even though she is not really chipping in something. <clears throat> at least maybe the other household chores that she's doing represent so much to the family. So for me, it's more of a question of comprehension in general. A more of a question of understanding ourselves. And at times, as I think, I think it's from Kemi who said that we come from different backgrounds. We come from different backgrounds such that we have some family, we have some of us have very large families. <coughs> if the, pre, the financial pressure that you have, at one moment is like you cannot keep on telling your husband every day that this person called me asking for ten thousand. This person calls me, I have to go and remove fifteen thousand. This person calls me, I have to go and do this. If it is not, if the, if the financial pressure is not very, it's not, it's not like balance. At one moment, one side will feel that it's like I'm putting too much. It's like they are spending too much on my family. Or it's like, I don't know how to put it. But from time to time, if you can feel some, yeah, some part of, say, some small freedom, maybe to a certain limit, not to say, okay, let me not exaggerate. Let me not say, okay, I will, I will, not, I will not go and squander. As somebody said that it is, it is a, 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 a extravagance. I will not go and squander 500,000 just for nothing or something. But I can at least know that I have some limits. I can, I can settle, settle some small, small, minute problems within my family. If, if, if it is like... I feel that I'm doing it, it is even already too much on our joint account. From time to time, there's a small, small 10,000, 15,000, small, small problems that you can set to, we're not necessarily coming to put it on the table each time, each time. So, but for me, if at the end of the day there is love, nothing will really, if the, the, the husband or the wife will not really take it seriously, if he sees that maybe you solve one or two minute problems in your family, we are not necessarily telling him. So the end of, the end of it for me, is understanding and love and trying to like look over some minute minute things that my that uh, maybe you do not really <clears throat> consult or not set some standards let me just put it like that that you can say okay uh, so your husband's brother can call him for some minute things he might just do it without necessarily coming to table it to you and ask for permission because men also love authority he wants to know that he can do something at each time, maybe without necessarily coming, coming to say, my wife, I, my wife has not accepted, so I cannot do, or she has not, or she has not, so I cannot do. So for me, it's like, we, if we have, if we understand ourselves and we let go some certain details, we can, we can as well go, whether you have a separate account or you have a joint account, 
it is all it birthed me. I like my independence, <laughs> but I communicate as well. All right, thank you guys. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, Elidi, for those wonderful points. Thank you so much, uh, everybody. I want to give special thanks to. I want to give special thanks to Manny. Thank you, Victor. Somebody thank the whole audience for their, I mean, participation in the program. I want to thank my debaters. They have done a very excellent job. Both sides, they were all eloquent. In fact, they spoke intelligently. I enjoyed the debate. I sat and I was like, I'm lost. I don't even know how to. Thank God that I'm not a judge. Because if I were to be the judge, I would not even know which side has won and which side has not. But thank God that the judges were there. They have helped me to tally the score that I have in front of me. I want to use this very opportunity to thank uh, Manny, uh, thank you Victorine for stepping in to cover up for uh, Mr. Mitopo. It's not that easy to just step in for something that you were not even prepared. And then she spoke very well. She really raised, I mean, wonderful argument. She raised wonderful points, which we really appreciate. I want to thank also the efforts of the judges. I want to thank Gaza Media. I want to thank everyone who has participated, whether you're just listening or you are giving your own opinion. In fact, I'm very grateful that you were part of this show today. So, notwithstanding, in every battle, <laughs> there is always a winner and a loser. So, on this note, with the scores I have in front of me that have been submitted by the panel of judges, not by me, those who were against couples using a joint account scored 9.5 on 10. Let's give them a very well done clap. And those who were for the fact that couples should use a joint account called 9.7 on 10. Let's oh. clap for them. <laughs> wow. So you see that the difference is not that much. The difference is not that much. In short, it's just to tell us that both sides, they did a wonderful job. That is why the points are very, very close. They are very, thank you so much. Uh, dear viewers, we are very glad that you came. We are very glad that you were part of this program. If we put this into practice, I believe that our families are going to be the best of families. So thank you so much for being a part of this program. Stay tuned to Gather Media Programs and have a wonderful day ahead. Sonko, Songaga, Bessie Pita, Bona, Gombia, Bessie Pita, Bona, Gombia, Bessie Pita, Bona, Gombia, Shake a blessing, Kifo, Papite, Papite, Bona, Gombia.